the streaming begins. I think we figured out the mic can't be plugged into a hub or it doesn't sound good, so it's plugged in directly. Um, my uh, Bluetooth headphones keep disconnecting, so I might just switch to direct wired. Otherwise, uh, things are good. Uh, I just lack the mobility I used to. The, uh, lapel microphone, the lavalier mic broke, wire pulled out, didn't have very good strain relief on it, so... Bluetooth is going off. Here it goes. I'm opening up the, uh, I think I can just turn these headphones off. Still getting ready here. Check one, two. Okay. We'll get this started by midnight, I'm sure. I've actually been drinking a little coffee. Check this out. This came out pretty good. That's from the uh, A10M or the A20M, either one really. But I think this is from the uh, we actually had this hooked up on the A20M, uh, and uh, yeah, it came out great. Uh, we have uh, some time lapse on uh, Lou's channel. You check that out. Um, I'm still working on uh, just getting ready here. I haven't worked on this for a few days. So there's uh, a little catching up I need to do. Um, I believe, as I'm checking the video metadata, this is now public. So, like it or not, um, it is live. I believe I did get the... Um, I don't know what changes I made here, but... Uh, if I didn't make it public, I will now make it public. Um, I want to make sure I did get the right link. It hasn't changed on me. Okay, good. It's still MI5RHZFJYYG. Write it down. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to be sure about that. Um, and now I need to look at the stream health. And things like that. Okay, yeah, I'm kind of new to this uh, Creator Studio stuff. I'll keep an eye on it. I just wanted to see what the analytics are like. Okay, cool, neat. Neat, okay, great. I'm getting used to it. Um, yes, this is today, is the recording date. Video location is Austin, Texas, my friends. We are in Austin, Texas. We will be speaking primarily English, although you might hear, if you're lucky, some Vietnamese. Uh, we are using a standard license. Science and technology, you can comment. No age restriction. And this is not a paid promotion of any kind. So, I am happy to save this while it's alive. Okay. Good. Anything else? Dashboard. Go to analytics. It's magic. Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone.
<laughs> We're just Get getting started, started here. Um, if, you, if you're joining us tonight, uh, we're just looking at uh, some low-level code inside of Marlin firmware, and we're going to be taking it apart. I have it up on the screen. Uh, the text extra big, so it's readable. Uh, this is one of the things that has already been migrated and would uh, work great. But one of the things that has happened, and uh, this is what we're going to be tackling tonight, is that um, since uh, Marlin 2.0 in recent months, uh, there have been changes to the way that the mixing works at the low level so that there's uh, it's supposed to be speedier and more performant and as a result it's also a bit more obscure and harder to go from the values that are stored for that speedier and more performant version back to percentages or proportions so i'm looking at the code that does that and i've been testing with it and uh, it doesn't seem quite right to me so I uh, actually have uh, this here I can bring it up into the in the terminal oh I should probably find the right serial port first I believe that must be it um, right, let's check and see if it's going to give this a terminal or not yes okay and there it is um, so very basic. Uh, I have it printing out the virtual tools, and uh, each time that the screen updates, it's doing this conversion. So that's why you're seeing it repeat. So VTool zero has uh, this number, and it's being converted to this number. Uh, and I really need to fix the way it's displaying it because that's actually minus 128, and I think it's just being sign extended by 16 bits. Uh, so it's positive 128 so uh, yeah I need to change the way that's being displayed so I'm just gonna change that debugging and we'll do some other tweaks uh, to get on the same page here uh, Lou may be joining us soon I don't know as you can see we're out, uh, we're out in, the, in the living space today and in the living room area we have a pretty cool little seat that we got uh, it almost looks like a uh, the kind of couch you'd find in the corner of a bar somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, it's comfortable. You can lounge around on it. It's perfect for this. It keeps me awake and alert. Uh, sitting at a desk, sometimes I want to just keel over and fall on the keyboard. Uh, here, I have to sit up straight. And uh, I'm doing a lot of leaning over and kind of peeking at the screen. So uh, this is sort of like your Saturday morning cartoon coding, although I don't have a bowl of cornflakes here to eat in front of you while I'm doing this. Anyway, uh, I don't have anyone uh, popping up so far that I can see in the chat area, but I'm going to go over to the, um, I'm going to actually go over to YouTube and look at this more closely. Um, let me do that. Copy the link. Uh, and go over to YouTube. Here we go. I'm monitoring this on my iPad, so that's how we do. Uh, I guess Saturday night at midnight in Texas. I don't know what time it is Sunday morning in other places. Uh, maybe a little earlier on the West Coast. Uh, but the geeks aren't popping up. Like, we want to see some coding, man. We want to see some live stream coding. We're excited. Um, but the purpose of this is not uh, necessarily to get a lot of views or anything, but to just document this process. And later on, it may get edited down anyway to just cover the basics. Uh, but I really wanted to kind of document as we figure this out. Uh, now, anyway, that being said, there is a lot of stuff that I did on sight unseen between part two and this part three that I will probably have to point out as we go along. Uh, but one of the things was uh, this experimenting to figure out what the uh, values are supposed to be. So let's see if I can find this output here. The tool. Um, I think I need to look for 
the tool in other places um, for the debug output. There it is. So here I'm just making an int out of a J, and I bet J is signed. No, it's unsigned. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's make it an, a U int 16T and see what happens. Uh, that makes it signed, so I just want to make all these unsigned, and we'll see if that makes a difference. Okay. Let's build it and install it on that board, uh, which I have conveniently connected right next to me here. And I can uh, easily check what's going on without having to use an entire printer, uh, which, by the way, the printers have been very busy. We're printing a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, Lou has been doing a lot of testing and kind of getting his, uh, cutting his teeth on uh, the multicolor and gotten very used to that very quickly. We've been slicing with Slicer Prusa Edition, and uh, we've been printing a lot of stuff. I'm just making uh, spool holders. Uh, these are your typical spool holders you've seen on uh, Thingiverse. You just each one takes uh, two uh, eight millimeter uh, skate bearings and uh, 608 bearings and. Oh, it's too old. Um, and yeah, you just put them together, and usually you stick it together, and the, either the friction of the bearing uh, center holds it, or you put some super glue and you just stick it together so that it's permanently affixed. I decided to modify the original model and put holes in for uh, M3 screws and nuts, and I put a nut trap in there, and the nut trap could be a little bigger. I had to melt the nut in, into place, but otherwise, um, yeah, it really works well. Um, it's nice to have uh, this so you can take it apart, reuse the bearings, not have to super glue it, and uh, and not either all, neither have to rely on friction either because I don't really trust it. And in fact, this uh, when it printed, it was loose enough that uh, this really wouldn't hold with friction. Oh, look at that. So our build is done. Our upload is proceeding so hopefully the next builds will be a bit quicker but I've just been switching branches around so Arduino IDE is uh, was hungry <laughs> hungry for a new build uh, so yeah it is burning onto the flashing onto the board right now I don't know how many times I've flashed this board but way way more than your average printer and it continues to flash well okay here we go starting up title screen Let's just turn this down in case that background noise echo is getting into the into the stream. Uh, okay, we have uh, a full thing, and now let's take a look again at that output. And sometimes you get a little garbage at the start, but that's normal. It's just uh, handshaking. Okay, so now our V tool, it's still printing as 3768. That's really strange. Okay, well, I will look into why it's doing that. Why are you doing that? Um, Color J, I believe. Oh, and then mix. Um, well, what are these co color uh, values anyway? Um, well, I guess this is fine since that's just uh, what it is. But yeah, what is color J? Let's find out. Um, it's color in mixing, so yeah. Color, yeah, it's past. Uh, it's not being passed. It's from. I want to say these are the these are the actual virtual tools. It's they're still called color, and there was a point where I was going to rename them V tool or something like that, uh, just so that it was clearer that they're the virtual tools. Uh, but each one represents a color mix and contains the three components or however many components. In this case, um, because I'm doing this dual mixing extruder stuff, another thing I did added this dual mixing extruder uh, define. Uh, and the reason for this is uh, we want to 
uh, also have that. Then we then I had then I added something which is just mix, and it's just a, a mix, and it's uh, zero to one hundred. Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, is it midnight? I guess it is. There we go. Welcome to the stream. It's midnight. Um, so what we have here is the color is then. Uh, you can see this is supposed to update the mix from the tool and it's supposed to print out what we got uh, as a result when it does that. Um, we do see the mix looks correct but these color components are sort of... Oh wait, no, let me think. 32768 uh, is 2 to the 16, right? It's not 2 to the 15. Oh, it is 2 to the 15. Okay, so it makes sense then. It actually, uh, it actually is the right value. I was wrong. So uh, what I should do here is like print out like hex or something. But anyway, that is the correct value. And uh, I was also using. Um, there's another possibility, which was to have it do this, just use eight bit like this. Um, and you can see what happens when you do that. I don't know if it matters. I seem to be getting better. Uh, I felt like I was getting more accurate conversions between the two, between 100% slash uh, low level mixing stuff. But uh, well, we'll see. So I'm being cognizant that uh, these. Coding uh, videos can be long and boring, and you know they're really only interesting to those who uh, come and sit in on them while they're actually happening. So you can skip ahead if you just want to, like you know, see what catch the uh, interesting parts. Of course, you know um, that's the. I mean, the first one, the first video of these live streams was four hours, which I didn't I'm not expect, but it just went on and on. <laughs> and I had a lot, uh, that's the thing, in the earliest uh, stage of moving some stuff over, there's so much to go over, and I had other things to discuss, so there was a little bit of talk about, you know, Patreon issues and things like that, where I'm being, I'm trying to be non-controversial and just accept everyone's positions on these things. Even though I'm not necessarily convinced of anybody's positions, uh, it's all very interesting, I can't wait to see how it how it all pans out. Meanwhile, uh, <laughs> I do a new funding options, which I'll tell you about at some point. Uh, just to help me get through this. Uh, right now, we're getting real low on filament, so I've started to set up a, uh, an Amazon wish list as well, or a, uh, an Amazon list for Marlin development stuff that we need to keep Marlin development moving forward. I had been talking to some guys about maybe getting some filament donations because we're definitely in need um, and those still haven't come through so I'm gonna get back to them about that but uh, meanwhile yeah we're very we're getting low and basically it's uh, PLA is you know we just want to print and see you know that the that things are printing dimensionally accurate and things like that we don't care too much about exotic materials uh, for the purposes of what we're testing but uh, some of the stuff we would like to test would be things that we can, that would be a little temperature sensitive. So uh, PETG in particular. So pretty much just those two, PLA and PETG. Uh, we're not too into nylon. Uh, we'd be interested in maybe trying it, but mostly, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of PLA. I just, uh, I just love working with it. Uh, it's so easy to work with, low temperature and all that. So anyway, it's what I grew up with as a rep rep geek. Um, so if we connect again, we now see, should see the 8-bit versions of the VTool stuff come up in the, in this, and yeah, there you go. So that's more like it, 128.0 turns into 100.0, um, which is interesting. Did it seem like it was back, is that reverse of what it was before, or am I dripping? Um... And I forget why 128 is significant with this, but it's like everything seems to be proportional to 128 or around 128 or the sum of 128 plus the number. I don't know. I gotta ask Andreas about how he implemented it. We can look at that and maybe there's some studying we can do 
here today and figure it out, or at least a little bit anyway, uh, because it is a peculiar thing. So the conversions I'm getting look okay to me, but I haven't, but the thing is I haven't, um, I should change the mix to some things that are a little less uh, obvious. So if we go back in here and we'll just clear the output and just let the mix keep going. Um, let's change the mix uh, using M166. Uh, or no, we can't use M166. We'll use M163, uh, S0P, uh, I think 0.5. And we'll use uh, S1 P0.5, and then we'll use M164, and that commits the mix, and now, there you go, now it's 50-50, see? Relation before normalize, 0.5.5, Rel normalize 2, and this normalize is, is part of the stuff Andreas did, 128, 128, uh, and then it, relation after is again 0.5.5. So what is that 0.5.5? Well, each, you add the two numbers, as far as I can tell, you add the two numbers together and then you take each one's part. So if you add 128, 128, you get 256. Each one is half. 50, 50 is what we end up with when we convert it to percentages. Makes sense. Okay, but uh, let's try something a little different. Uh, we'll try uh, 2.25 and 0.75 instead. Which is, of course, your 2575. M164, boom. Okay, this time we got 2575, and this time it's not exact, but it's close. It's 0.24 and it's 75. So this I would round up. Um, but again, it, the mix is proper ish. Like I would actually round this, I would round that up, and I'd round that down. So right now it's not rounding properly. So let's take a look at that. Uh, let's take care of these simple issues first. So mixing.h. Um, let's take a look at our uh, VTool stuff. So yeah, this is all correct as far as that goes into spine here. Um, <clears throat> instead of 100 times color divided by the total, we also want to add, we want sort of a point, we want to have a, a 0 0.5 kind of, you know, round up or down. So, how do we do that? Let's see, 100 times our color divided by the C total. Let's see what we really want is this number here, sort of like this. Float. Boom. This divided by C total. And we want like a plus 0 0.05 or something like that. Or 005, I think. What are the numbers we got? Let's take a look at the video one, one more time real quick. Um, right. Okay, so what we got was, yeah. 2470, 247753. So yeah, if I .00 if I put a couple of double zeros here and then a five, that should give us what we want. And then this is just the reciprocal of that, which should again, if this is over 0.5, it'll be on, this will always be under. If this is under, this will always be over. So uh, at least with the dual colors, we haven't even begun to think about how we're going to deal with multiple colors, but this is the, the essence of it. I have, you know, loop here and this would do basically what it would do. Um, Right, mix i equals mix one equal. Yeah, you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, and maybe we want this to be oh, mix is I guess it's this. So, yeah, we can do this. Put an in 16 around it, and the same with that just 
this is kind of implied, but it's just nice to do that. So it can, it'll tell you like, oh, you're gonna lose precision. And it allows me to do this kind of like 100 times that plus that plus that um, plus 0.05. And if I'm multiplying by 100, this moves over by two. So it could just say plus 0.5. Like this. And then you don't need that, and so on. So that's kind of it. That's just rounding up. Uh, and that's what you should do. Okay, let's try that. Tim sent a video to me by Messenger. Hello, Tim. What's going on? Uh, uh, Tim Hoagland, Hoagland of uh, TH3D Studio is uh, always sending me hilarious things. Um, he's got a new place he's very excited about, and I'm excited for him. I can't wait to see it when I go up to Murph, hopefully. Murph? Planning on going to Murph? I got a ticket. It's free, you know. So yeah, I'm planning. Oh, look at that. He's got his camera set up on some kind of like spinny automatic tripod thing, or he's just using his cool selfie stick. Very nice. Very nice. I'm live streaming. What's up? <laughs> anyway, uh, the build end is now uploaded, and now we can check it. Isn't it nice we have something to do while we're waiting for uploads to complete? Thanks to the internet, compiles and uploads are no longer quite as boring. We can catch up on our favorite programs. Okay, so do I still have... Oh, looks like I'll have to do that. I have to type in my commands now. M163 S0. P 0.25 is means first per, first part of the color is 0.25, second component is 0.75, and the final part, once all mixed together, they become 0 0.25, 0 0.75, relation 42, 128, relation after, close, round up, 25, 75. Look at that, we kept it. Let's see if this works if I do something obscure like 23 and uh, what would that be? 77 and 164 and that gives us 2377. Good. That's what we want. Um, interesting that it's uh, 235765 instead of, uh, but I guess it's because of the way it's stored. And then after, yeah, I mean, well, anyway, it's giving me more or less what I want, which is good. I think the trouble was that as you're editing it, it goes into this other form, and then it gets converted back. And if you're constantly converting to one form and then back, and one form and then back, you're, like, losing your, your it's not going to keep, it's not going to change. So what I want to make sure of is that when I'm editing it on the screen, uh, that it works. Um, which reminds me, now that I'm doing the conversion apparently properly, let's take a look and see what happens on the screen. Which you can't see, but I'm going virtual tool 1, boom, 0, 100, virtual tool 0. It does say 2377 on the screen. If I edit it and change it to 25, it doesn't save. So that's one thing I need to work on. I think I have it editing the virtual tool instead of the mix. So. What needs to be done now is uh, to decide how I want to do it, whether, I mean, I do want to edit the virtual tool, each virtual tool, and this is the difference in what the, this is one of the differences which I've kind of decided on with, uh, and I'll, I'll open up the menu so you can see it, um, menu, mix, mixer, and we have a whole file set aside just for mixing, which is great. Um, one of the great benefits of Marlin 2 is things are broken up, and so there's a file just for mixing. So if I want to open it, just type mix, boom, open. Uh, and let's see, <clears throat> before I, uh, let's see, I'll do this to 
collapse everything so we can see what the what the structure looks like. So there's really only a few things. There's a uh, select the virtual tool method that the LCD is going to use. Uh, there's an edit uh, a mix edit screen, which is when I tap on the mix item. It opens up a special editing screen which displays the two percentages side by side. Uh, and that's this. And it just does the encoder stuff and we start to get clicked and then updates the V tool from mix. So this is where the interesting stuff comes in. I am editing the mix, but it's then going into the V tool and I think that what's displayed on the screen is actually the it should be the current V tool mix. It should be the current V tool mix, not just like the mix. Um, so we'll check on that too. And it would be nice to also, there's kind of, there is room there. There is room on the screen where, at least on the graphical screen, where it could maybe have the virtual tool index. So it could say, you know, 16 equals. 7228 which you know they're not very readable but at least you you know what your virtual tool current index was your selected tool stuff so mix I'm trying to think of the best way to display it anyway it will also open up the uh, dog m code which displays the mix um, uh, mixer dot yeah, so here it is if we're mixing, this is what it displays, and I believe it, I do have this on the character display, but if not, let's open it. Um, is it called that? Ultra LCD, LCD print, status screen, is that here? Uh, well, it does have this, draw status screen, and there it is. So let's make sure we got that. Somebody go back to the previous live stream, check for me, would you? No, here it is. Okay, so I thought I had. It was weird because I was looking through the files and I didn't notice this file had been changed, so I don't know. Anyway, these are both here and you can see what it's displaying is uh, currently uh, it updates the mix from the virtual tool before it then displays it. So it is using the current virtual tool and it's displaying the mix values on the screen. So if I then go to my mixer, switch to tool one, I should go from the info screen, I should see, yes, it does have zero, 100, okay. So these are the interesting stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, Tim's Tim's taking care of things for the for the wife tonight. So, what he calls his honey do list, which I uh, I seem to know what that is from. I forget was it uh, George Carlin? Somebody else used to talk about that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so on the screen you see we have our mixes uh, and everything is good, um, and. It is displaying the mixed value as a as a kind of a handy thing. Um, I guess wait here it's calling update mix from V tool. I guess I should call it here too. Yeah, just in case. I mean I don't know. I mean maybe I don't need to because anytime you select the V tool, it should update this mix. Um, but anyway, uh, so we'll think about how that that applies. Uh, then keeping the mix around just because it is convenient to just be able to display these two numbers uh, whereas I would otherwise have to convert it on the fly it seems that I am converting it on the fly anyway from the virtual tool uh, so it's rather um, I don't know, it's just ironic um, update mix from VTool, select VTool, yeah okay, so we can turn off the debug soon uh, because we are getting the right values now. So now the gradient part is the interesting part. Um, here's the thing. Previously, the way it worked is you would go to the gradient mix and you would have a start mix and an end mix, and they were set up just like the mix uh, in the mixer, and, you know, where it's percentage-wise. It's that mix value here. Um, and 
of course, in Marlin 110, we could do that because the mix uh, itself was stored as, you know, was stored as just reciprocals of 0. Point, of 1.0. So there were, you know, it was easy to go between them because it was just a direct conversion. Here you have the weirder conversion, uh, which at least now seems to be preserving the right values. Um, so presumably that means that no matter what value I set, it'll well, almost. Ugh, some of them aren't working at all. Eleven, uh, just did nine, nine, eight, ninety-two. It comes out twenty-three seventy-seven. Uh, boy, okay, I, the mixed conversion in one way is working, but the other way not so well, so I don't know what's going on with that and why it's not working, so let's try some of those in typing them in, because uh, I didn't really do those, 8.92, yeah, doesn't like 8.92, so let's see why, yep, um, M163, yep, M163, uh, S0, um, P, uh, 0.8, uh, 008, yeah, um, I guess I could just say 8 and 92 because of the way this works. One P ninety two and M one six four. Um, so there's point oh eight point nine two. It changes it to eleven one twenty eight, which uh, does come out as eight one ninety eight ninety two. So why is it? Oh, and it's on the front screen. It shows as eight ninety two also. Okay, so it's just being weird on the mixer screen. Um, or is it? Let's see. Oh, well, I just typed it in. That's why. <laughs> it's only... A, okay, so it works when I type it in, but it doesn't work from the LCD, so that tells us something. So let's go to the LCD. Uh, let's go to the LCD code and look at it. What happened? Um... After we edited the mix, we did update VTOOL from mix, and we might not have said update mix from VTOOL. But we shouldn't need to, right? Um, it should just be ready to go. Well, let's take a look and see what update VTOOL from mix does, um, and whether we're calling it otherwise. Okay, so we're not calling it outside of this menu. Um, Let's see what M164 is doing. Well, it's calling normalize. I know that. So, and it's calling normalize based on the accum what's called the accumulator. And so we could use the accumulator here instead of the mixer. Update VTOOL from mix. So let's try that trick and see if that works. Just for the heck of it. See what happens. Um, Okay, update VTOOL from mix. So here it does copy mix to color. And this is what I thought was the same, you know, stuff, but apparently it's not. It did, did say mix to color. Um, oh, we didn't really look at the screen when we were doing that, did we? So let's get the log to and we'll have a look at it while we're using the screen and see what the, uh, what the output says. Maybe it'll say something like, you're crazily not... Okay, so mixer, boom, see there how it's converting a bunch? And then each time I roll the, the wheel, it's doing a bunch of conversions. So let me clear it. All right, let's edit it now. Okay, editing. Okay, it's not doing any conversions here. Let's change it to 892. Boom, 892. Look at that. It thought I had 1137. It, oh, it mixed 892 to color 1137. V tool 1136, 37 to 2377, which is what it says on the screen now. So, totally wrong. Totally wrong. 892 is not 1137. 
not at all. So let's figure out what's going on with that, and we'll close this here. So once again, let's check the mystery, uh, the mystery box. Once this is working, this is most of it. The next, the next trick is just to get the gradient um, moving smoothly, and I guess I'll be having to use like the idea of convert to mix, then convert, change, then update the mix based on your, you know, how far you're moved along. Um, and I'll be using just, I guess, uh, I, I don't, we'll, we'll see what I do. But uh, yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be uh, pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. So um, here I'm using copy mix to color. Here's what I would do instead. I would do, um, instead I would say copy uh, M163 accumulate collector collector and I would set it to mix and then I would call normalize normalize and then I would have it store it in something so let me see what happens in normalize here um, mixer normalize tool index yeah so here it does this so I would say boom normalize get current v tool, boom, and then I would get rid of this, and so, and then I don't know if I need it at that point, um, although it's a handy function, I might find it useful, um, update gradient from mix, yeah, so, update gradient from mix, that's interesting, copy mix to color, oh right, it has a target, um, yep, so in any case, Look at that normalize again. Mix your normalize current V tool. So this is what it does when you do M164 normally. It does the accumulator thing and it does that. Quite simple. Um, and we can always say, um, yeah, where's the normalize? Um, oh look, it already does that. So we know we can just do this here. that already does it for us okay uh, and here again if you just you don't need to do that you can just say that and it does it so there how about that for convenient um, so the M163 collector gets I see so it's just one way of doing that one item gets a value, yeah. So convenient to have that as a method. Um, let's see. So it is called M163 Collector, and it has as many components as our mixing thing does. As you can see, there it is. It has mixing steppers, and so does our mix. So we're all good. Um, mixing, it also is, a f it uses floats, which our mix does not, so... Um, clearly copy is not going to work here. We're just going to have to use uh, mixing stepper loop or something like that. Mm. Stepper loop. Is that right? I don't know. I. I equals mix I. <laughs> Let's see if that's correct. Uh, mixer. Mixer stepper loop, there it is. Okay. Mixer stepper loop. Okay, so there we go. And then if we say normalize, we don't need to do that. All should be well. Then this copy mixed color crap. Update the gradient from the mix. Updates the gradient dot color. Um, okay, well that's interesting. I guess. I'm going to have to think about whether we want to keep the gradient color, whether it's even useful. Since we have other places, we have the mix here now, which is being used during editing. During a print, you could conceivably edit the mix. It would be the active mix, but it's always getting it from the virtual tool, the current virtual tool. 
except when gradient is enabled, then it gets it from the gradient color or the gradient color. So I'm going to assume. I think what I'm going to do is probably uh, do uh, is use this copy mixed color um, thing because it does the right thing because gradient color is what we use. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess we're stuck with it. But if I'm not going to be using this, um, well, this kind of blows because I really want normalize to work. Um, so let's look at normalize. Uh, what are we doing? We're taking the max of these values. So this is how we end up doing it. So this is essentially what we would be doing. Let's just simply copy this. We'll go to here. We'll stick it here. We will lose this. We will um, right T color. So some target color is going to be set. And we're going to go with T color uh, here. Sorry, I'm being boring right now. This is what you do. This is code. <laughs> the world of code. I'm being very boring. Uh, I just was uh, contemplating while looking at this whether uh, to... Since we're doing the two, the two component dual mixing extruder stuff here, whether to just go with the simpler version here, uh, where... Inverse max is already solved, uh, where C max is not needed. Um, so here, for example, uh, basically this is done. Um, I don't know that this is accurately accurate, but it claims to be. Um, I mean, I'm finding the, the opposite, you know, that you saw how the, well, you can see the math that I used, and it was like, it takes the sum of the numbers, and uh, each number is in proportion to that sum. But for some reason, it's, it still uses that 128. It's strange. Okay, so well, let's just do this anyway. For now, we'll copy mix the color, we'll use it as it is, we'll also um, put this back temporarily and we'll see if we can get away with it. And if it works, great, if not, we'll use, we'll use the other method, but let's do this. Um, hopefully it uploads successfully. While well, it's doing it, let's see what Tim is up to. <laughs> uh, He's got A10 and A20s in boxes. He's listening to the stream. He's got a few things left to do on the lighting. I wonder if the stream is me that he's listening to. I guess it must be. Um, lighting, yeah, lighting's always fun. Uh, lighting in here could use a lot of work. We do have some good light around our printers, though, so that's, that's important. 
good uh, white, you know, neutral white light. Helps a lot. Uh, which reminds me, there's a print that's just finished. I'm gonna go check it. Hold on. Compilation complete and print also complete. Uh, these came out great. Check them out. Um, make sure I'm seeing everything from your point of view. Here we go. Uh, yeah. How about that? That's pretty nice. Uh, that was, uh, I love my easy mat. Look at how nice the, it just stuck so well and it got such a pretty texture. Uh, and yeah, the, I like this better because it's got, you know, the screw holes. So this is going to complete the spool the first of about four spool holders that I'm printing uh, so that we can have uh, we put a big shelf up over the printers so we're just gonna lodge them on these and these are great because if the pool if the spool ever gets snagged it just pulls it right up off the sh right off the shelf onto your printer so these are great for knowing that your spool got snagged you'll hear it right away um, back to our debug session let's take a look at uh, at the maths we're getting uh, when we connect and do some of these uh, things on the screen uh, and see if they are better so we had uh, some strange results last time with 8 and pretty much any values so let's go and change it to 8 again and oh it didn't change at all I apparently did it wrong. Okay, one more try. Copy mix to color. Color selected B tool. Uh, what did it say? Nothing good, right? Mix to color. Oof. Yeah, okay. And if I do my uh, M163 stuff, what do I get? S0P, uh, again, let's just try 892, 92 with 1, M164. And uh, yeah, okay, so it works fine from there, but again, does not work fine because, again, it's normalizing properly with M164. And I just copied verbatim what was in M164. Tell me I didn't. Oh, wait a minute. There's one reason. That's that's supposed to be mix. Okay. Um, I believe that's okay because it is using inverse on those numbers. Yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again one more time. It helps to not be asleep when you're doing this sort of thing. Uh, which is why I have this coffee right here. Yeah, so the uh, I was going to t mention how the gradient uh, goes. Now, the gradient uh, idea was rather than have uh, a starting gradient color and an ending gradient color, that is to say, uh, the way it used to be, or the way it is, I should say, on the GTEC with 118, A10M, and A20M with the latest firmware is that you select, you know, 0 to 100, and that's one component. The other component is the uh, opposite, so 892, for example. And then that gets turned into your mix, and then you can very easily edit the start and ending mix with those two numbers. Very simple. And in general, you have, you know, you... I don't remember if they did the whole virtual tool thing in the firmware at that time. I think it's there, but the, now that we have it as kind of a more standard behavior, the question then is, well, should we make the gradient go between two virtual tools? And that's a possibility. Of course, if you only have one virtual tool, which is allowed, uh, then you can't do gradient because you wouldn't have two to go between. So I gotta make it 
so that you have to have at least two virtual tools and then the idea will be instead of having it so that you select a mix and another mix you just pick virtual tool to start with and then virtual tool to end with and that's where your gradient goes instead of the way it does now um, the trouble with that is M166 as it was conceived originally does do does have um, those components it has parameters for that so if we want to extend it instead of having start percent end percent like it does now PQ we're gonna to have to change it so it does uh, start um, you know first uh, virtual tool and last virtual tool so that's what's gonna happen with this and so for now I will use IJ um, just because they're convenient um, but I and J and uh, start tool and end uh, tool and I guess V tool just to be consistent uh, so we'll start V tool equal the number between zero and whatever uh, between zero and uh, mixing virtual uh, tool tools um, and then same here um, good and I think these will go away because they are not going to be useful to us also uh, if vtool equals mixer ingredient end vtool uh, or the two z's are the same then there's no gradient flag on so then we either turn it on or off and then we also say yep so here instead of percentage we're gonna say uh, right percent percent so these are gonna go away these are going away and these are going away and yeah so it'll be like it'd be like this yeah right look at all this this is all just <laughs> this is all pointless it all changes now um, let's just copy it here and just put in start the tool um, I guess I could show the gradients uh, of those tools here just for just because uh, so but it's not going to show it in terms of percentages that's the problem we still have that problem of the mix always being uh, so yeah this is one of the frustrations it's like yeah it's great that the mix works much better and faster but I want it to speak English <laughs> it doesn't speak my language anymore um, okay so I believe we have now corrected the I believe we corrected the color. Let's check. Uh, okay, M one six three S zero P eight ninety two and M one six four. Okay, it looks like it is now working correctly. It did give us eight ninety two in that case, and. It preserves, oh yeah, when I edit it on the screen, almost 11.89 is coming out as 10.90. Let's find out why. Uh, 11.89. What kind of numbers do you get? 11.89, 15.128. Oh, it should be 11.89. Uh, 11.89, oh, I see. 105 and 8.95. Those don't add up to exactly one, do they? Um, or, yeah. 105 and 8.95? Uh, 8.95, yeah, I guess it does. Okay, so fine. Uh, <laughs> stop scrolling, I'm trying to read. Um, 
brother. Okay, so uh, we got these numbers. 15, 128, and they came out to... Uh, so I guess uh, it should have rounded up, but I don't know why it didn't. Uh, maybe I didn't include the rounding in this case. That's a possibility. Copy mixed to color didn't round properly. Uh, because, yeah, again, it is going back and forth between these two. So the thing is, if you have 128, you would imagine, uh, or, or more, you know, and that's the case, then it should... What? What? Oh, right. M166. Yeah, I don't have these yet. Um, Gradient T, so we're going to have, instead of start percent, we're going to have start V tool and V tool. Um, virtual tools uh, for the gradient. Well, I guess it's obvious that it's for the gradient. Uh, Start and end virtual tools. Uh, and I guess what I'm going to end up having to do is probably something like where I have a, the mix in here and I actually store the mix uh, as. Uh, what was I using? I was using uh, uint dates again, so it would just be, you know, uh, uint 8t mix, uh, mixing steppers. Something like that. So just more things that make it easier to calculate. They're calculated ahead of time. Uh, so gradient mix, there it is. Uh, we'll just keep playing with this until it works, basically. <laughs> we'll build on it until it's really elaborate, and then find out what's needed and what's not. There may turn out to be a lot of extraneous things after all this uh, finagling. So rebuilding with start mix and mix uh, start v tool and v tool start z and z and these will be going away start percent and percent uh, if we look for them yeah you can see there uh, they are mentioned in a few places quite a few places so uh, for example update gradient for current z this is where it's going to change uh, in particular uh, here's update gradient from the mix we are using the mix for that, and we are using the gradient color, and the gradient color is what's used during this type, during gradient printing, when the gradient is on. Uh, so, I guess that's pretty much clo close to what it's going to be, actually. Uh, the only difference being that uh, we're going to be moving between for the more fancy version, like if, if I do dual mixing, like this is dual, for example, I can just do it this way. Start Z, start percent, etc. But for our purposes, we're going to actually, oh, when this is again, here's uh, another case where we need to round some things. Um, Uh, SP plus gradient and percent minus SP times the percentage plus 0.5 is the mix and then 100 minus. So, you know, do a little rounding here, which isn't that important. Um, but can't hurt. Um, anything else? 100 minus. This is a start V tool and V tool. So if we're, let's at least implement this part. Start V tool and V tool. Um, so if we are doing a start virtual tool and an end virtual tool, 
Well, in fact, uh, we do have these. We do uh, have the option to use start mix and mix. So instead of start percent and percent, so we could do that instead. So let's do that. We'll keep it simple. We're going to just end up setting these. So here we have a percentage, some percentage of one versus the other. We have all this stuff. So here's how that works. All right. Let's do it from here. <laughs> Or, uh, oh, I guess we'll call it mixer, stepper, loop, mixer, stepper, loop. Uh, we'll just use I, and we'll say, uh, here we go, uh, mix sub, uh, or I should say, I guess, gradient. Color. We're going to copy in, but first uh, we want to update the mix itself. Okay, so we're just going to say mix i equals uh, gradient start mix i plus, and now we use end mix minus start mix. Could be positive or negative, we don't know. Uh, times that percentage we got earlier. And that's it. Hard to believe that's all it takes, uh, but that's it basically. And now we can update the gradient from that mix. So what we'll do here is we'll just say, get rid of those, we don't need that. Uh, we could take this though, we could say, um, just to make it a little more readable or shorter or less repetitious, con sm equals gradient start mix i, and we'll just use uh, sm here, just make it less repetitious. Okay, and then we get rid of that. We got that, A and Z minus start to Z. Okay, that looks good to me. Now the gradient will be updated from that mix. This isn't that much more complicated. Uh, so now we have any other mentions of start percent? We, oh, we got plenty, plenty. Uh, also, this is going to be, um, if there's a start mix and an end mix, we don't know what they're gonna be. these if they really do go away I guess we're committed at this point <laughs> let's put them away goodbye uh, V tool and V tool right we do need that and we're going to assume that it's zero and one because why not? Uh, okay, and then the mix will be whatever it is. Uh, okay. Let's look again for start PCT. Okay, plenty of those. M166 still refers to it, not anymore. Um, it's dead. Um, okay, uh, yeah, now this is where we're going to change things. Do I want to change? Start PCT. How do I want to do this? Uh, update mix from the thing tool. <laughs> uh, let's see. How do we want to do it? Start V tool and V tool. Mm, I guess I can just say update mix from tool or whatever. Update mix. Where's the update mix from V tool? There it is. Uh, and we'll just 
choose the starting and ending ones. Uh, and we'll say uh, start uh, start lead tool, right? Start lead tool. Um, and then we say uh, mixer gradient. Jeez, uh, I guess uh, I want to say mixer gradient mix, but it's mixer dot mix. I believe that's correct. Zero. One. And same here, except. tool there we'll do it that way that'll just give us the two components what do you think two, two components. components I could do many components here I suppose what's going on well I'm printing out uh, the gradient as I figure it out uh, also I'm getting rid of this whole single percentage thing that you edit the gradient as and I'm having it so you choose virtual tools virtual tools instead so here for example when you commit a gradient uh, one of the things you do it's like okay I've set a gradient and now it just checks to see if the start v tool is different and the z is different and if it is, then it considers it enabled, and you're happy. Um, so let's see, any other start percents mentioned? Oh yeah, of course, let's see. So here's where it's actually edited. This is gonna go away, we're gonna change this to editing of the virtual tool index instead. So, mixer mix. So right now it's editing the, when you go to gradient, click, Mixer, click, uh, gradient, click, gradient mix. So it starts Z and then Z will stay the same, but gradient mix, click. This is going to change to start V tool and V tool, and there'll be no full gradient. Um, I guess if you did full gradient, it would it could pick two tools that are full gradient, but that's probably going to go away. So it's just going to be the two tools, and then this could actually fit on this one screen at that point because it just adds one item. So I might do it here, where it's start Z, start tool, and Z in tool. So we'll see. But the uh, the trick here is that, yeah, since we have virtual tools to play with, and not just the single mix, uh, it's better to think of it in terms of that. So we'll figure out later whether I need to do conditionals. Virtual tool must be enabled, etc. So let's see, gradient. So that that's okay. So here's the full gradient. That's going to go away, I suppose. So we'll just comment it out. Check your water. Yeah, check your water. Um, here we have start mix and mix. Um, where else are going to go away? So we're going to change that to uh, start the tool. Um, guess like that and the tool and I guess I'll make it lowercase okay there we go so uh, the spacing in here good to go all right uh, right so 
This is the fun part. These are just going to be basic menu items now, where they used to be fancy. Uh, so here we would say menu edit item. Uh, where's the virtual tool thingy I did before? There it is. Okay, so this was basically it. So the same kind of thing here. We have uh, menu item edit, and do we need a callback? Um, yes, we do because we want to have it do some things for us. So we'll use this message start v tool. We'll use gradient uh, start v tool zero mixing virtual tools minus one and there you go lcd mixer select v tool um lcd mixer uh start v tool i guess um update i don't know gradient something like that v tool <laughs> don't know let's just call it uh start v tool for now Gradient Beatful. Let's call it that. And then this other one's going to be end Beatful. Same thing. Different value. And again, we're just calling the same thing. And I believe we don't need to use the add ons here. Just these should do it. And then we don't need this temporary thing either, which means we also don't need the fancy. Uh, editing either uh, mix start edit all that don't need it these can go completely away yeah that should really be called gradient anyway uh, okay, so here we have that now. Start Z, end Z, and these could conceivably go here too, actually. Um, boom. And suddenly you don't need this. Full gradient, no such thing. I guess you uh, could get away with something like it, but I don't know. Maybe I should have this and still allow full gradient. I don't know because it's, an, it's, a, it's an interesting idea. I mean, you could have it as an as an option. So I'm gonna kind of keep this around just as a, a, a thought. So what do we got? We got these. Okay, let's look for last vestiges of this. Okay, yeah, and these have now been done. So what would I do here instead of this? Uh, I would say, let's just do this uh, to do. Um, use a full gradient um, with no uh, virtual tool reference, maybe. concept so there you go that's how we uh, so we remember to do things in the future let's put a comment somewhere way in, deep in the code and someday someone will find it be like good idea <laughs> okay what's left well when we edit a mix, we are editing the mix and then we're updating the virtual tool from the mix, which is great. Uh, OK, 
Okay, let's try uploading this and see if it works yet. Or at least building it. I'm sure, sure I broke something. So it should skip most files and just build the menu. Right? And maybe M166. And maybe mixing. I don't know. Jeez, I changed so many things. Okay, uh. Building, building, building. Still building. Okay, uh. What do we got? What's left? We have a uh, virtual tool, we have selecting the two tools, we have, oh, we have to write the routine that commits the mix. So I called, I named something Mixer Gradient VTool, so let's do this. Let's do this! Um, should I just call Mixer Gradient VTool? I guess I should call... Let's do mixer dot uh, update gradient mixes. And then, oh, you're hearing echo? It's probably because, huh? Someone saying echo? 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 Oh hey, there's chat. Well, I have a I have an overlay for the chat, and I guess it isn't quite working. I thought I would see it, but no. Hey chat people. Oh, it's Tim. Hey Tim. A little bit of echo. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I've got two microphones here, so one thing I can do is uh, turn off the uglier one. Let's try that one. And then same with FaceTime. Turn off the uh, Brio mic. Well, kind of like, like the, the real mic for the FaceTime, though. And the FiFine mic for the debug session. But it won't let me turn, turn one off and have the other one on, so... I, I guess, guess I'm just stuck with one or the other. So let's, let's go, go with the Fifi. Fifi, Fifi mic. mic. Okay, Fifi it is. Fifi? Fifi? Yes? Okay. Good. So, hello. Uh, at the moment, just getting to... Uh, hey, Practical Printing, what's up? And, uh, let's see, so what do we got? We got the virtual tool, we got all this stuff, we just did the test build, it didn't work because I had a typo. Line 45 and mixing. What did I do? Oh, of course, it says that uh, brace is around initializer for a an int eight. Let me see if I got everything right. Start Z, end Z. Start V tool, end V tool. Uh, start Z, end Z, end V tool. Start mix, end mix. Well, that should work, right? Start V tool, NV tool, start mixing. Uh, you would think that would work, but it's for some reason doesn't want to. Um, it is an it it is a couple of arrays, so I don't know. It should work. It's telling me that it won't. Okay. Braces around scalar initializer for type int eight. T, aka sign char. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why. But let's see if that does anything. I mean, it shouldn't. In essence, this should really be just be empty. And that can work too. Equals uh, brace zero brace is just fine in C with for a lot of things. Um, although, by default, uh, with the Arduino and other embedded processors, the bootloader clears the RAM of that you allocate at runtime, at load time, to zeros. Uh, it's not absolutely guaranteed, but so far I have not seen problems. So I tend to skip adding an initializer unless it's absolutely necessary. Or if you get compiler complaints. Uh, 
so my stupid overlay is just not working well, so I may just get rid of it unless uh, anyone has objections. There, it's gone. Okay, what's now not working? Start VTool and so on. Um, right. What else is left here? Uh, so I expected at least a couple compilers. I've been doing a lot of little changes. Um, getting rid of the percent idea is good, but it's messy. In order to get the uh, because because of the, again the way the okay what's this update mix from V tools not declared oh well I guess that's a mixer method update mix from V tool. Um, Now these are, again, they're percentages. They'll be, uh, they'll be getting changed, but so now it should be a little more interesting. I have M one sixty six is going to be different. Um, it's got I J. I don't know if I want to use P Q. I guess I could for the again ability to just use any arbitrary mix that you want, and that would include full gradient. Uh, even if you don't have those tools saved, a full gradient on one end and another full gradient on the other. Okay, let's see. So it looks like it is, again, not building too well. What do we got left? Oh, uh, gradient start V tool. Yep, I see. Okay, we don't have update gradient mixes written yet, so let's do that now. If enabled in gradient mix, update those gradient mixes. Let's see, anywhere else I put it? Yeah, so this would be a good place to put it. Update gradient from mix. Copy mix to color gradient color. Very nice, but not what I want. Um, what we want is something called update gradient mixes. And what those are going to do is just update the start mix and mix from the VTools. Update gradient mixes. Here we go. Static. Inline. Void. Okay. Um, we want the mixes from update mix from V tool. There it is. So what I'm going to do is just kind of cheat. I'm going to update mix from V tool uh, gradient uh, start V tool, and then I'm just going to copy the mix. Copy uh, gradient start mix from mix. Okay, it should work. And then do the same for the end. And again, you can see I'm just using the mix as a scratch space, which I think is fine, uh, considering where it's, what it's being used for, and I think it's all, and it, uh, considering it's also being like updated all the time. Um, okay, start tool, end tool, copy, done, done. Right, right. <laughs> Hopefully.
let's see. It's complaining because of that, I think. Just the missing method. Build, build. Oh, my lord. Remind me to turn off all the options. I have a lot of options turned on in this just because. But for this, the purposes of this testing, I certainly don't need them all. It's too many. Hey, Practical Printing. M166 worked great on 118. One feature that would be useful, though, the ability to define multiple gradient mixes in startup G code and assign to virtual extruders. Possible? Um, yeah. There's a lot of things that are possible. Um, it's just a matter of how complicated we want to make the G code and how much more code we want to add to the pile. Uh, whereas, you know, as much as we as much as we can get the slicer to do is preferable because the firmware is supposed to be dumb as a stump. Uh, and, you know, the idea of having virtual tools that you use every, uh, like for one print job, you know, I don't know, it's just like having this printer firmware to store all that, just, I don't know, it does seem a bit much. Um, be nicer to just keep it in your slicer settings. Here's the gradient I like. Uh, as it is, we don't know what your Z height is. So you have to at least have the Z height stored somewhere outside of the firmware. Um, and I don't know if we're going to be adding that. Again, all these things take RAM. And all these things take storage space. So it's like, you know, it's a trade-off. It's like, how much do you want to add? Uh, and how many features are are left and available. But that's the thing, any resources you're not using are wasted, so you ultimately should be using as much RAM and as much program space, as much flash as you possibly can. Otherwise, you know, it's just not being used, it's wasted. Um, so here we go, a flash written. Let us now take a look again. So I was getting those weird values again, I, I still haven't solved that. I think it was 1189 was giving me trouble and it still is so I need to fix that rounding um, let's figure out what's going on with that 11 and 89 why would that round badly um, and why what kind of weird values was I getting so let's take a look um, I won't type in a lot of M163's here All right, so mixer, mix, Let's turn it up to 11, and we get 15,128, which then translates into 1090. see it in action, M164, proportions, so that 105 really should round up, so let's figure, let's fix that. Hmm, alright, so we're copying the, in this case, the mix to the color. And here's the rounding that we're not doing. So, so here we would have 11 and 89, and this is where it would get converted. And then I believe actually when we copy the color back to the mix, uh, that may be where the where the real issue is. So let's take a look at that. Update mix from V tool. So yeah, here it is where it's adding 0.5. Ah, uh, okay, so, uh, let's look at that normalize function, because it, it's the one that outputs those relations after normalize, and this is where you get, uh, divided by C sum, so, I don't know, it should be good, but, Um, float divided by C tote 
plus 0 0.5 100 times and then you know what can we do let's see well I may want to make it 0 0.55 or something like that um, I don't know exactly maybe it's supposed to be a one just to give it that extra kick rounding errors are always a problem with uh, with C++, low level, well in math in general, rounding, float rounding is always an issue. It could be 0 0.4999 and something like that, and that's why it's giving us the strange result. It may, uh, maybe our rounding up is what's going on, is, is the issue. 11 and 89 becomes 10 and 90. Why does it not remain? As long as we round consistently, it should all work correctly. Building. Okay, what else have we got on the list here? So we have now, uh, we should now have the, um, the actual gradient should now be doing the right thing where it's giving us the proportion between the two mixes. So, again, the uh, values eleven eighty nine, fifteen, one twenty eight become so close, but not. And again, it becomes 1090, so uh, we do need to add that V tool zero to mix. Uh, ridiculous. All right. Um, y 100.0 f times float uh, plus 0.5. Should be one higher, should it not? Shouldn't it? What is it that's going on here? I mean, should I be adding 0 0.9 here? I mean, let's take a look and see what that does. I don't really want to do that. Um, you know, nor do I want to add one just arbitrarily either. Um, I just don't know. Um, Hundred times the thing divided by plus zero point five Y. Um, very peculiar. And then uh, I don't know. I mean, if I add one, that's not good. I could try adding a point six, but again, I just don't. I just don't like that. It sounds, it's not, you know, 
It's going to round up in cases when it shouldn't. But maybe it should always round up in this? I don't know. Maybe I should just be using seal here instead. Like this. I seal, I have a feeling it'll work better. Tool change? Um, all right, let's see here. Yeah, so if, you, if you're tuning in late, remember uh, my lavalier mic uh, exploded on me earlier, so I don't want to hear no audio complaints today. I'll get a new one soon. No, all your complaints will be gone. Uh, here we are. Oh, hey, look, it rounds up just fine with 0.6 or with, uh, with 0.6. Let's see what happens if I just use seal. I think just 0.6 just doesn't seem right to me. It seems like a, a cheat. But seal, now seal, that's anything over, you know, Point oh 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 will round up, and that's what we really want because things tend to round down in float errors, not up usually. Um, so you'll get point four nine 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 instead of you know point five oh 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 one or something like that. So here we go. Um, I don't know. It all depends. It's float voodoo. Can I show you the sign? <laughs> Came out really good. Uh, so, hey, check out this other uh, print spool holder, Lou. It came out great. I still have to melt nuts into it, so I'm going to make the next one with a bigger nut trap. But, yeah, came out great. You can see the you just print one kind and it per works out perfectly. The trap lines up with the side that has the round side and then the other one has the trap on this side with the round side on this side. So your screws are always in facing the opposite directions. <laughs> if you want them always facing the same direction, then you're just barking up the wrong tree. You have to print more, more symmetrical things. I, guess, I suppose I could flip it in the slicer. Yeah. From your... Okay, let's see if seal works. Mixer. Uh, boom. Just give me... All we need is just to know that every one of the possible hundred values works. Oh, really? And there's only a hundred, right? There we go. That worked. Twelve. Perfect. Am I going to test every single one here? No. I just want to make sure that a few of them work. Fifteen. Yes. Sixteen, okay. I feel like we're getting there. Seventeen, all the primes are working great. Let's see. Yes, okay, I think we have solved that issue. Good. Okay, so we're now we're down to what did I do with gradient screen? Start V tool, end V tool, start Z, end Z. Yes I did. Start V tool, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Up to fifteen. Zero to fifteen. Boom. NV tool start Z and Z. And so you don't actually get to see the mix until unless you edit it here. So if I say V tool zero is gonna be toggle mix hundred zero. And then if I go V tool one is gonna be zero hundred. Okay, so everything is good. I wish you guys could see this screen, it's really cool. I, I really should be showing you this while I do it. Let's let's switch over. Uh, right, there it is. Now you've seen my nostril. And here it is. 
Uh, so let's click on over. Let's hope it focuses a little bit. A little bit better anyway. If I zoom in, maybe it'll focus. It's good enough for you. Okay, so here's the mixer. Uh, here's the virtual tool. As you can see, we select one. We get a mix that's got that. And then the others are sort of because there's only a couple tools, they're sort of arbitrary. So let's start with virtual tool zero. Set a mix of, hey, why not 1189? Hey, it stays. Okay, now let's go to our gradient. Start with virtual tool zero, end with virtual tool one, which I think should be the default anyway. Start Z, end Z. How tall is my model? I don't know. Let's make it really tall. Uh, it's 267 millimeters tall. Boom. So now it will gradient between those two tools, 1189 and 0, Uh It would be neato if, if like you could do like I've got this tool, and as I select it, it would show you the uh, mix that corresponds to it, and I actually will probably make a screen that does that. But for now that's pretty good. So toggle mix again between the two. And that applies to any virtual tool. Um, and uh, that's working well. Okay, and then there you go. So the gradient is there. Uh, and what else is left to do? I guess pretty much put it on the printer, try some prints with some gradients, and see what happens. Let's see how badly it breaks or doesn't break. I have a feeling it won't. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah. Welcome to the world of G-Tech style mixing. Updated. Uh, yeah, so the idea of having virtual tools that are gradients is an interesting concept. In that case you've got a tool that has two mixes in it uh, instead of just the one and then it has maybe some heights associated with it. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting concept. I mean, none of this stuff is uh, written in stone. So they're maybe uh, certainly extendable, so if some clever vendor wants to mess with it and come up with their own concept, they certainly could. I'm just really giving you the idea of how you might go about it in this case. And you can see like how the, uh, in case you're wondering, MX, of course, mix. Little carrot symbol means that the gradient feature is on right now. And so this is the current mix. And if you were running a print as it went through uh, the print, this would start changing as it goes. So this will be reflecting the current gradient color um, as it goes on the screen. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's as much as I can accomplish tonight without getting into uh, hours of printing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it here. But uh, I'll come back. Uh, in another session real soon to demonstrate what, where we're at and see what we got and uh, hopefully uh, that will be much it'll be much more further along and more tested and more confirmed by that time I uh, expect that'll be in the next day or two so uh, anyway thanks for uh, coming by those few of you that did and uh, this will be session three who knows how many there will be? I'm expecting four or five probably before this is done. Then the next thing will be uh, moving on to uh, some other feature that will be hopefully just as exciting, interesting as this one, <laughs> uh, and fraught with complication and problem solving and all that good stuff that we've had going through this. Uh, kind of see a lot of it is that trial and error. It's like did. If 0.5 didn't work, then SEAL finally did. I'm glad that it did. Uh, you never know what's going to work and what's not until you've tried it. Or you've already got the experience and have tried it in the past and it worked great. Good for you. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Links and stuff are in the description. Uh, don't forget to visit Lou's channel and check out his videos. Print a day. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll also add like, a meal a day to that because uh, we're doing a lot of cooking around here and that'll be exciting uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, hey, see you soon